Hey, it's Skillabyte here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do paint correction. And I'm gonna do it on this old 79 Ford F-150. So this is after washing and clay barring. And I'm hoping in the sun you can see there's a lot of oxidization in the paint. Sorry about the wind. A lot of oxidization. So the clay bar, so this feels pretty smooth but the paint is oxidized and clay bar is not going to take that off. So step one, you want to wash the vehicle. I recommend using a dish soap for this. This is the only time you'll ever hear me say that <laughs> because dish soap is terrible on your paint, but it removes grease and waxes which you need to do is the first step on your paint correction. So using some dish soap like Dawn, I of course use two buckets, wash your vehicle. Next step, you're gonna use clay bar. You can use a clay cloth. I hate these things, I think they are worthless, but you can try it if you want. And of course you need clay bar lube. You don't even have to dry the vehicle before you do this. All right, so I just sprayed this section with clay bar lube. And you just run the clay bar across the paint. This picks up any pieces of debris, metal, dirt, whatever, that are embedded in the top coat of the paint. It takes a little longer with the clay bar because it doesn't cover as much, but at the same time, it does a much, much better job than some of those other products like that clay bar cloth. Now, Oh, I should have told you, do this before you do it, and you're going to feel roughness. Afterwards, it should be real smooth, and this is. The spot right there I'm, that it didn't get. But yeah, just back and forth, and you're going to do all of the paint. There we go. You're gonna do all the paint with that. That alone will make it look better. Just make sure you got enough clay bar lube. And I will have links to what I use in the description. And on the clay bar clay here, you're gonna wanna move it around, get fresh surface on it. This one's close to being uh, used up because that dirt and little pieces of metal and stuff sap will get embedded in there you can see hopefully the camera is showing you how dirty it is right dirty it is right here that's what it picked up off the top of a hood that was already cleaned so you want to get fresh surface i would not use this piece of clay bar on paint that I wasn't gonna buff afterwards, I would have already switched to a new one because this one's kind of nasty. But fold it over a few times, flatten it out, give you a fresh surface. Just look at it, make sure it is clean before you use it on good paint. Yeah, so when you're clay barring, where like the, with this where the top coat is coming off, you can see it gets worse as it goes over. Don't clay bar that. That's not gonna help any at all. That's just gonna take what paint you have there off. So I've now clay barred and rinsed the roof and the hood. And you can see, hopefully you'll be able to see on yours, there's no wax left. It's all been stripped. And that's really what, that's what you want before you start doing the serious paint correction. 
the dish soap helps and then the clay bar should pick up everything that's left. Now we gotta move on to the other panels. And yes, you wanna rinse that clay bar lube off. I used most of the bottle. So I think I've used about 16 ounces. Don't skimp on the lube. Buy those tablets that I link in the description. They are so much cheaper and work just as well as the name brand stuff you buy pre-mixed. I mean, they, they just rob you on that stuff. Rinse your clay bar out. You actually want it to dry before you put it back in into this. Uh, what else? So I clay barred everything. By the way, clay bar works great on chrome. Not so great on rubber, <laughs> but chrome, it shines up chrome, gets all the contaminants off your chrome. What else? If you drop the clay bar on the ground, congratulations, it's done. It's going to pick up all that grit off the ground and you're not going to get it out of that. So you need to toss it unless you want scratches. So now that every it was washed, it was clay barred, it was rinsed, now you're going to dry it off then you start the buffing process to get a nice fresh layer of paint all right and here's what you're gonna need <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding some of this you will need all depending on what you have how you want to do it you can do this manually got one open here okay so this is a kit from carfident I got off of Amazon and it works well. You got the black edition for black dark vehicles. Then you got a regular one for non dark. Now the kit comes with this little tiny one. You can do it by hand. I'm just going to do the orange pad in this one. These pads, they have all different cutting power but orange is generally the one that you want to use for uh, oxidation you could even use it for swirls it's very you know versatile you can go to a, a lighter cutting pad if you want to just polish or something or if you want to get real serious i got a there we go if you want some serious cutting, do a wall pad. Next, we have cordless, like this Saker. It works okay, but it's gonna take you a while if you're wanting to actually paint correct with cutting. Does a great job for wax, light polishing, but uh, not so much cutting. Um, this is actually to blow out the pad. When this gets too saturated, with the compound, it doesn't cut well. You're gonna want to blow it out. I, this is what I use. It works well to blow that out. Or you can, you know, if you got an air compressor, blow it out with that. This is just a rotary spinner. It does have a speed adjustment and stuff, but it just spins, but it cuts well. And then you got this one. And this, in my opinion, is the best budget DA polisher. Links in the description. It's a six inch dual action polisher. You'll see what the dual action is when we go to use it. This one will help minimize. So here, manual, safest. This little sacred cordless, next safest. You're unlikely to mess something up seriously with these. You get to a rotary, you could eat through your paint quick if you're not careful. And you can eat through like black plastic and stuff like that really quick if you're running to them with this. This one is kind of a medium, this dual action. Because of the action, you're less likely to burn the paint, that type of stuff. Some things you will need are some microfiber cloths, 
I really like these from Z Wipes. Links in the description. And no, oh, your compound. <laughs> You're gonna need a compound. All right. I like the Meguiar's and the fact that they actually give the number how well it cuts. So this one here, Machine Glaze, it's a one. That is a polish. It's not gonna cut deep. You're very safe using it, but it's not gonna get out scratches. And or oxidation in this case. Swirl Remover 2 is a three. Now, it will remove swirls. It will remove shallower scratches. So these carfinet ones, they're pretty equivalent to the Meguiar Swirl Remover 2. So they're around a three. They're gonna cut some, but they're not gonna be too aggressive. Now Meguiar's has the Ultra Cut compound. What is that, 12? So this will cut, it'll cut fast. It works really well, but as a general rule, you wanna remove the least amount of paint that you have to. Now I may have to go into this, but what I'm gonna actually use is this one, the Swirl Remover Black Edition. And we'll see how well it goes on the roof and in the bad spots. Well, the roof is a bad spot. I may have to go to that. So let's talk pad types. This is a flat pad. So the flat type works great doing it by hand. You get good coverage and, and you don't have to worry about splattering compounds so much because, well, you're just doing it by hand. You're gonna be <laughs> moving a little slower than most of these. So next you got the ones with little squares cut. You got your hex and you got your waffle. These are to help keep it a little cooler. So this will be the coolest on your paint, less, least likely to burn it. But at the same time, it's coverage isn't as good and you can leave, you can hit and miss places if you're not careful with this. The other thing is splatter. These compounds will splatter. Now I'm gonna tell you how I minimize that, but be aware that if you used a flat pad on one of these, you're gonna make a mess. So I personally like the hex. I don't like the waffle just because of the inconsistency on it touching the paint. And this is my actually my second choice the cuts you do need to have the right size pad for your device so six inch plate you want at least a six inch pad the idea is you want it to cover you want it to hang over this just a little bit so that you don't risk all right see how it is over it just a little bit. That's so that you don't risk digging that into the paint or something. At the same time, you don't wanna to use too big of a pad. This is like a seven inch on a six inch plate. Now I make lines on my pad so I can make sure that it's turning. It's especially true if you're using something that's like cordless or a little weaker. You wanna make sure that pad is turning and be sure to wash them out good and let them dry when you're done using them. This one is stained. Uh, the black has a, uh, it's colored. So it leaves a little stain that I just, I couldn't get out. That's why it's for dark colors. Cause I can stain this and it'll actually fill in scratches and stuff. You can get these a little piece with Velcro a hand, stick it on. I'm not going to stick it on here because it doesn't ever want to come off. <laughs> but you stick, all right, I'll touch it. And then you can do it by hand, but you're only getting the center of the pad, not the whole thing, but it does work. Pad should be clean.
your product needs to be shaken. Read the instructions for what you're using, but almost all of them, <laughs> all of them that I know of have to be shaken, not stirred. This is gonna wanna flip up, splatter. Okay, <laughs> I just realized this is gonna stain this one. All right, I guess it'll be dedicated to the black and dark grays. So you're gonna put I'm gonna put about four of these, something like that. I'm gonna put some gloves on. I don't want to stain my hands. So you want to put it down, move it around, okay? Now you'll notice there's still some glops inside the crevices. This is, this is going to soak in, and this may still splatter. Okay, so now I've got it set at three, kind of in the middle. We're using the orange. Got that. Oh, it needs to be in the shade. Do not do this in the sun. Okay, the cord is over my shoulder, so it doesn't get in the way. Now I'm going to put it on the paint, then turn it on. See the movement here. Want to keep it moving. I have the hood up. It's, it's, uh, the hood is open but down. You don't have to do that, but that's just how I'm doing it. And you just basically go back and forth here. don't have to put a lot of pressure. Especially when you get into rises, you don't want to cut through the paint there. On these angles, it's easy to cut, so if you don't have a lot of surface. Watch out for trim. And the cord fell off. Careful if you lift it off the paint, if you can spray. All right, it's the. I think you can see it pretty easy there. See the diff of the line. Now it's not. Well, Still needs more, but you can see that it's already working, and this paint is quite bad. I should probably use that 12 looking at it, because now I did I've only, you know, that was just very little. Didn't do much at all as far as cutting. That's what you do, and you just keep, like I said, you go in lines, back and forth, about 50% overlap. Try to stay away from your trim, at least, you know, the black stuff, the chrome or aluminum may or may not hurt it. You can go, you know, do a hex pattern. All right, let's do some more. I bump this up closer to four.
time Wipe this up. Now you can do a bigger area than that, but I do recommend starting with a small area. Get your compound right, pressures right, speeds right, all that. Then once you got that figured out, then it's just quick to go through. Watch out for trim. Things like that. For a round trim, you can, depending on what it is, be very careful. In this case, this is just chrome. So as long as I don't hit it with this edge, I'm fine. But I have overlap, as you can see. Kind of it. Well. Now, Mike, if you have black or something trim here, take that off. Also, you can do this by hand. If you need to do it by hand, you can. It's just the same same thing. You're just doing it by hand and uh, get as close to it as you can without ruining them. All right, so a couple things. One, you really need good light. Doing it outside, but in the shade will give you really good light. You can see Using the machine going around here, I got pretty close. There's still some in there. Of course, didn't get the middle at all. Go across. Boom, I haven't done this. I hope this shows. But a couple things I want to show you here. One, the O, I was able to just pull out. But this sticks up just a little bit. That's going to catch and ruin your pad. Furthermore, right here, see where it's the, the paint is? And it's if this flakes, well, here's a better one right here. It was a little chip, and it's kind of rusted. And there's a little spot that sticks up. It, if I go over that, this could chip. And that paint, that piece of paint, could get embedded in the pad, and that will just scrape the snot out of your paint. So be aware. Next, on these uh, concave areas, hold the pad at an angle. It's not really it's there. Hold it at an angle and go through and that'll let you get into those concave areas on the convex areas like this so yes you'll do some of this 
but be careful doing that because you'll cut into specific spots and not others. You'll want to do this number, and then on the more complex, you're just going to have to work it like so. Also, as with clay barring, when you're buffing, see that clear coat's coming off? Don't buff that. You're going to cause that uh, clear coat to flake. And just like the chips in the paint, you're going to get that in the pad. And that's going to just go and scratch your paint. So avoid that. That's why I've got the hood popped. I'm going to have to raise it up a little more. Or I may even have to put something on that tape or something. If I can't get enough separation so I don't get that on the pad. So this left side I did with the Meguiar's Ultra Cut Compound, the 12, because this is really oxidized. You can see now it's really shining. Now it's not perfect by any means. It never will be. The oxidation is just too deep. I don't know that the camera is going to pick it up. Oh, um... <laughs> And I avoided right here, but I got right up around them. This is with the number three cut, basically a swirl remover, scratch and swirl remover. I don't know. I can tell the difference here in person. I don't know if the camera will. I mean, it really shined it up, but the oxidation, it's not going to take oxidation out. Whereas the 12 took a fair bit out. It needs some more. But, you know, it's got, the paint's got some problems. Little chips that rusted. Stuff like that. So it'll never be show. So I will definitely be going over this side again. And actually both sides with the 12. Get a little deeper. You don't want to go th too deep because of the clear coat, but actually, let me see if I can do the roof real quick. Okay, here's the roof. I hope the camera will pick that up. It's really oxidated. I'm in the shade, so there's no sun reflection, but this is all oxidated. It's faded. Can you tell the difference? <laughs> now, it got worse. As I moved from the back to the front here, it got worse. And you can tell So this needs more. As you can see here, there's some bad spots. That looks a lot better than that. And that is clean. That's just oxidation, surface oxidation. So you may end up with something like this, where this is really bad. The compound is just, it dried in this dry paint because it's so windy. Not in the sun, but it's just so windy. It dried it out before I got it off. So, well, more compound. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to switch to the uh, back to the carfident and uh, use it to get that off. All right, right here. Come on, honey, go and feel the speed. And slightly on an angle. What was the one? Chase it with the rag. There we go. So that spot's good. Now I just got to keep going until I get all of the places that are really rough and soaking up the compound. All right. 
Same roof. Just work at it, let the buffer do the work. Have a little compound. There's gonna be a few spots that you're gonna inevitably find. So you'll have to hit again, but considering what this looked like before, wow. This looks good. Really happy with it. All right, second cut on the hood is done. Looking at the video screen, it really looks good. <laughs> now, it's deeply oxidated, so I can still see some oxidation looking at it. But it is way better than it was. I'd probably, so I, this was with that uh, Meguiar's 12 cutting product. The link will be in the description. So next, I'd want to go down to a three or e even a one at the end to get that nice and smooth, completely polished. But it definitely, definitely looks better than it did. Woo. Now I got to get the front of this, of the roof, and you know, all these parts in here, I don't want to use a buffer on that. I'm just going to use, do it by hand, like with this. Apologize for the wind. And I'm using the, that's, that's more than I needed. See how it's always makes a mess. This, you just manually polish with it you can get this into places that big buffer can't reach and I'm using the three on this the swirl scratch of swirl remover because this on this front wasn't that bad not too worried about the rubber on the windshield. <laughs> All this bright trim inside the seal, window seal is old and breaking off. Well, that will scratch. All right, switch towels. You want to have several towels. There you go. Not too bad. But yeah, got to hit everything with the uh, manually that I couldn't get to with the big buffer. And I'll have the links to the stuff that I used in the description as well as the ones I pref the ones I like to use. For instance, I'd never recommend this one because that just fell apart. Hex Logic are good. Anyway, <laughs> all right, that was helpful. Please like, subscribe, comment, and good luck with yours.